Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and here we are again! How many games does this make? This, there's Rebirth 1, Rebirth 2, Rebirth 3, the Idol spin-off. There's the two Dynasty Warriors ones. Well, not Dynasty Warriors, the, uh, the sort of um, beat-em-up spin-off ones. And then there's this one. So that makes seven or eight? Yeah, but this is Super Dimension Neptune versus Sega Hard Girls. Also, why did they change that? I keep thinking it's, I'm going to say Hyper Dimension at least once in this video. I guarantee you. But oh well, we'll go have a look around anyway. So you've got your usual voice volumes. That's fine. You've got your voice select English and Japanese. That's also fine. Camera controls start out inverted by default, and that's a pain in the ass. But thankfully, they do actually mean inverted. So just swapping the normal makes it work. How? You'd expect press up left to move the camera up left if you're, you know, used to that being normal. And you can turn up your camera speed as well. Rotate your minimap, your camera location, and your auto message time. I was a little bit worried when I saw that, uh, that options menu combined with the fact that this is a fairly stellar game and... Well, yeah. So, I've put about... 2 hours 40 minutes into this. It's actually closer to 3 because I had like 20 minutes of gameplay that I lost because I didn't save the game and there's no auto save because god damn it. So about 3 hours more or less. So here we are. This is the grand library where you'll be spending most of the game outside of the actual dungeons of course. There's... It, it's, it's basically Rebirth again. The combat's a bit different. But it's basically Rebirth, but we'll go over how everything works anyway. So, of course, you can talk to the hard girls. And they do have events, just like in the regular games. I know I'm going through this text a little quickly, but there's no voice acting here. Screens just turned off. I forgot this. I forgot to change that setting because I'm an idiot. But yeah, as you can see, there's a bunch of. What? Oh yeah, there is auto and it does work. It's fine. I got nothing wrong with that. I just, I, I really have nothing to say about it because it's just, it's Neptune level writing again. Like, <laughs> I honestly can't say much else about it. But anyway, we'll just go have a look around at everything first. So you've got the library, which lets you change some little settings about the game, and th these are pretty obvious. It's just like the plans from the previous game. You've got all your different pieces of info. I've got all the different... I've got a bunch of different missions here. Not all of them, but some of them. And you've got character info and all the different characters. Pluria does come back in this one. Oddly enough, I don't think Vert, Noir, or um, Blanc come back in this one. At least not yet. They might come back later, but they're not here at the moment. You've got the archive, which you can use to, well, you know, just look at pretty much every event. Like, seriously, there's a ridiculous amount of events in this one. But yeah, I'll just play one of them on auto so that you can listen to the voice acting. And I mean, to be fair, if you've seen any of my Neptunia videos before, you know exactly what this is going to be, so you can skip ahead a few minutes. But here we go anyway. met her, right? I think I've met her. Wait, no, no, mm -mm, I haven't. Well, not in this game, anyway. Can you stop with that meta bullshit? Ugh, there are so many darn titles in this series. It's even hard for me, the protagonist, to keep up. Cut it out. Okay, okay, I'll stop. Mm, I kind of want to meet her already, uh, but not really. What if we meet that goddess first? Hmm? I wonder if we can resolve things before something happens between her and Mega Drive. What are you thinking? Don't tell me you want to murder her! <laughs> no, I would never think of such a vicious thing. 
Oh, so you're thinking of, um, accidentally shooting her. What? No! Something similar, though, right? I have some ideas. Well, I can't say it hasn't crossed my mind. You better not get in the middle of this. Those two having their clash was part of history, wasn't it? Yeah, but it caused generations of horrible conflict. But if that's what happened, we don't have the right to change anything. I, I know that, but... Now, now, why don't we cut the chit-chat? You should be focusing on driving anyway. I don't have a collision avoidance system, by the way, so... Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I don't think there's anyone even on the road anyway. We're totally fine. Hey, in front of you! Watch out! Huh? Whoa! Ah! Did I hit something? It felt very fleshy. Hey! Someone's lying on the road! Did, did, did we run her over? Is she roadkill? No! person was already lying there on the floor. I wasn't even speeding. Crap. Crap. Um, hey, you're alive, right? Are you okay? Hey, wake up. Yeah. She's still with us. Hold on. We're gonna get you through this. Ow. You're so mean. I'm so sorry. I don't know what just happened. You're gonna be okay. I'll make sure of it. Didn't have to wake me up so rough. <sighs> I know, and I'm really sorry we woke. Wait, what? Um, doesn't she sound a little too alive? What? <sighs> hmm. I think I'm awake now. Thank you. You're welcome. Aren't you hurt? Why would I be? Is something wrong? Uh, I'm seriously starting to think so. Why were you sleeping in the middle of the road? Well, um, because I got really sleepy. What a simple answer. <laughs> Don't give me that. You just scared the life out of me. Hey, that's not fair. You weren't keeping your eyes on the road. You could have taken her life. Neff, of all people, is scolding me over my driving habits. Hey! What now? I have to go now. Bye-bye. What? She is such a space cadet. Hey, wait. Why don't we go together? What? I think you've seen enough. I... Yeah. Neptune's a bike. But basically, it's... It's Neptunia level riding with Neptunia level voice acting. Really. I mean, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know where this is going. Of course, you've also got... Um, art. Not concept art. Just art. And of course, you've got the music to listen to. And of course, the whole thing's filled with references to old Sega consoles, and most of the people you end up fighting are Sega consoles, and of, co of course, I've got all the usual enemies. We'll get on to how that works shortly. We've got the shop, which is weird, because in this game, there's an absolute ton of items just lying around. So, you never end up needing to really buy anything unless you really want to. And even then, it's... It just... They've got, you get so much money as well, which is weird. I had to do a bit of grinding because of course I did. And I had an absolute ton of money by the end of it. And even then, I had enough to upgrade all the girls with a bunch of rings of essence. And it's all fine. And yeah, we'll just ignore that for the time being. Something new is class changing though. And class changing doesn't actually do that much. But I'll show off what it does do. So what happens is that you have... 
a bunch of skills that are different between the different classes. And you also have the stats, which need to be leveled up individually, which is actually kind of annoying, because if you want to try out a new class, that means your stats go back down, and you have to go back and grind somewhere else for a bit. Kind of sucks, but at least it's nice that they let you play around with how things work a little bit in the combat, in case you feel like doing something else. There are a couple of other things you can do, like you can get baseballs in the level that you can turn in here for stuff. And as you can see here, strangely enough, the text scrolls off the screen. I just felt like I had to mention that. So in the main menu, you've got your items, obviously. You can check the status of all your party members. And of course, they can all wear clothes, accessories, and stuff like that. Oddly enough, they have this weird system called clones. Which is something that are given to you by Histoire. And strangely enough, in this plot, nobody knows each other. Despite the fact that they're all apparently goddesses, but yeah, they all don't know each other, so you have to go through all the meeting stuff again, which is kind of annoying, but... Yeah, they all know- they all don't know each other, so in order to actually have the other characters, like, fight in the party, you get clones. Which feels really, really lazy. And even worse, you get a cl clone of Sega Saturn as a party member to go around with, which is weird. But even weirder is you've got Sagami here who's a completely new character, not based off any hardware, at least actively based off any hardware. And she has the ability to transform into any of the other Sega hard girls that she's met before. So I don't know why they feel the need to give you a clone of Sega Saturn here. I really don't. It's just strange to me. You've also got the usual stuff, like you've got Lily ranks going on here, and... Yeah, I haven't got any of them leveled up yet. I assume there's some events or something going on behind there, but they haven't changed that. What they have changed is that formations are actually things you have to discover now, and they actually give you bonus effects depending on which one you do. I'm going to go with Cross Knights here because it gives you more HP. But yeah, it also determines how the Lily ranks in influence the battle, and I'll d demonstrate that how, how we... Brain? Start again. I'll demonstrate that once we get into an actual fight. And of course, you can come here to check the library pretty much any time and your play data, of course. You can see all the stuff that I've done here. I'm surprised it tells me how many battles I've lost, because I don't think you can save after whatever. And of course, you can come here to save and load at any time, except when you're in a dungeon, obviously. So we should... Do I have a mission selected right now? I don't. Okay, so... The question is, do I want to go and actually do a story mission, or do I want to actually go and try and do a boss fight? Because I'm pretty sure I can go do a boss fight. I'll go do the boss fight later, but for now, I'll go a face only mama could love. We've got to go and kill some baby bugs in the Mega Drive era. So, the annoying thing is that a lot of the dungeons actually repeat themselves again for some reason. It feels kind of lazy, but we'll get into that. So, we'll go into the Mega Drive era. And also, annoyingly, you can only select one mission at a time, and it actually determines uh, this little counter on the side there, like there's a mission info in here. This little counter on the side determines how many missions you have until those missions disappear, which is weird, because you get loaded down with three completely different sets of missions at one point, and they all have the same clock, and it'll all run out by the time you get two of them done. So I don't know what happens to the Dreamcast era content, and honestly, it really stresses me out, because you don't know if you have to do it all in time, or if you'll just have enough time to do it, or if it'll literally disappear and you can't do it unless you do another run of the game. And it seems like a really arbitrary thing to lock behind a timer, but there you go. You do also have the little characters here that you can talk to. That's a reference to Luigi's Mansion, and of course, here's the Metal Gear Solid reference. And that's probably a reference to the absolutely ridiculous password system in the NES Metal Gear, but we'll just leave that alone for now. So, our mission was to go and kill a bunch of kid bugs. Do we know where those are yet? Baby bugs. Because thankfully, we can do that. Yeah, it's in the Gold Axe Summit, so we can go... Oh! Wonderful, so we have to go back to the Codex. We have to go back to the Grand Library and go back and <laughs> go back to the Sega Saturn era where I've got the Gold Axe Summit unlocked. At least I think this is where I have it unlocked. No, apparently I don't. 
Not great. Whatever. We'll just, we'll just pop right into the Gold Axe Ravine. We'll go fight shit. No point wasting any time. So, yeah, this is a dungeon from Rebirth. Yep. Yeah, this is, this is basically another Neptunia game. There are a couple of th new things that you can do. You can sprint, and you can jump, and there are some dungeons that this is more appropriate than the others, and there are breakable objects. Yeah. Yeah. If I can get close enough. Yeah. And you do get, you do get objects for breaking those open. So, you know, good on that. And you've also got the ability to hang off these cords and make your way over. There are also metals lying around on the dungeons. This is a dungeon I've already been to, so that won't matter very much. But there are metals lying around on the ground that are free money. And if you collect all of them, you get a little thing saying, Hey, you got all the metals. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so let's actually go get into a fight. They've changed how simple attacks work in this one, and it's much worse than before, because... It takes a really long time for the animation to actually count, and you get nudged forward a little bit if you're moving in a direction. So, you can actually get moved after your animation's already done, and you'll get the disadvantage when you go into the battle. However, if they turn and see you, no, if you're halfway through the animation, sometimes it won't count anyway. So, it's better literally just to walk into them, because you have more chance of getting this to work properly. It's frustrating as fuck, honestly. Alright, so let's go over how the battles work in this game. Notably, the frame rate has dropped significantly once I've entered the battle. I mean, it wasn't too great outside there, but it's dropped significantly here. So here's how the battle system works. You have this little meter on the side here, and it goes up depending on what you do. You've got... It'll let you move around and guard before you have to um, do something else, but if you attack... The meter will go above that particular... Oh god, I'm in, a, I'm in a, a really easy dungeon. Let me go back. Yeah, let me go back out of this dungeon. And we will go to a dungeon that's actually difficult. I know Toy Polis is actually difficult because I was in there grinding a little bit earlier. Okay, now we're in Toy Polis. This might actually be a new dungeon, but I can't be certain. Anyway. Let's actually get into a fight. So as I was saying before, you can move around and you can attack. And this makes this meter on the right here go higher. And once it's in the red, you can't do anything else. And the higher this meter gets, the longer it is until you can take a turn again. So if I just move around and hit defend... I get to go earlier than Sagami does. Finally. However, if you hold the X button, it charges up a power attack. Which does a lot more damage. But it also makes it so that you have to wait a really long time until it's your turn again. So... Honestly, the better idea is literally just to attack until your meter is about to hit the red and then do the power attack. That's the way you get the most damage out. And of course this one's strong to fire because of course it is. SP also works differently in this game as well. So, you know, it builds up when you attack or take damage. And it carries over between dungeons. It doesn't restore or anything. So, in order to get SP, you just have to just get as many attacks in as possible. And then when you've got enough MP, you can actually bother to attack. You do also have transformations, as I said before. So we can transform into Sega Mega Drive. I actually kind of like this design. It's kind of neat. The designs for all the Sega Hard Girls are actually pretty neat. But yeah, we can do this. Yep, they've all got fancy animations for the... Transformations and stuff like that. Unfortunately, she doesn't stay in Mega Drive form in between fights, which is kind of annoying. Notably, Ify also has her own transformation this time around. Let's see if I can actually get that out. Yeah, I've got 200 SP. I'll be fine. Okay, she defends, and now we turn into Flaming Ify. Or something like that. I don't know. This is, this is strange. Just There's no justification in story for why she has this. 
And in the other Neptunia games, at least the ones I played up to the points that I played them at, they, um, they didn't have this. It was a little strange, I gotta say. But, yeah. So this is basically just a reworked Neptunia battle system. It is simpler, I'll give it that. And the focus on this little meter on the right there is kind of a neat concept. It's just... I really have trouble figuring out when I'm going to be able to take my turn next. Because as you can see, it just it just goes all the way down to the next down there. But, like, if I attack, I don't know how far this is going to move me down the meter. So... See, it moved me down to there for some reason. And I, I honestly, I'm honestly not sure just how this system is supposed to work. The game's not hard enough to make that a real big problem. I mean, you do have to grind a bit to be able to beat the bosses because they are just tanks. Like, I fought Sega Mega Drive and earlier on I fought Sega Dreamcast and they're just tanks. Like, they're absolute fucking tanks. So you do need to grind up your XP, um, your XP a bit. And get an absolute ton of XP and stuff like that to level up. And you do actually level up really quickly in this game if you are if you have any idea what you're doing. Because if you go to a dungeon that has a lot of... See how far away I was from that fucking coin and it still counted? Don't ask me why that happened, it just did. But yeah. They are, they are tanks. They're fucking tanks. They are ridiculous amounts of tanks. And the boss fights are not fun. It's literally just gather every gather 100% fever power, which we'll talk about shortly. And just beat the ever-loving shit out of them with fever time until they die. That's basically how the boss battles in this game go down. Because once you're in a position where, where everyone's close together, they can just spam constant attacks constant group attacks basically I mean this does kind of also work out in your favor because if you've got someone who can heal they can heal like two or three people in one go so it's like you can spend like you can heal everyone by like 50% of their health in one turn and it does work it's just kind of annoying to deal with honestly so you might wonder what that fever meter is over on the right. Well, I'm not going to be able to show that off very easily, but fever builds up over time as you attack people and win battles and stuff like that, obviously. And when it is at 100%, you'll be able to collect the gems. You might have noticed that a couple of gems spawned and I was able to jump to collect them because you can jump in this game. It doesn't actually cost anything on your movement meter, which is kind of nice. One more. Take take him out. And I'll... No, I can't even do Flame Awakening because I don't have the SP. Because of course I don't. You know what? Screw it. I'll use a... I have... I have an item that'll let me do SP here. Obviously, SP items are... SP items are very rare in this one because... They obviously want you to be managing your, M your SP between battles. So... It's kind of annoying, honestly, but I understand why it works. And it works fine in the context of this battle system. It's just, I'm just a little annoyed by it. Change is kind of nice in this series in particular, just because of how much they tend to do it's the same. But then again, you've got all this crap with the, with all the characters, you know, they're just using all the enemies and the dungeons and the models from the first fucking game again, and it's just ridiculous. Wait, no, I forgot the golden rule. Attack first, then get the power attack in. Because screw it. Oh, yeah, right. I said I'd show off Flame Awakening. There we go. I, I like the little changes that they've... Oh! Wrong thing. Thankfully, I do have... Okay, there we go. Said I'd show this off. Bang. Funnily enough, that still kills it, but there you go. I do, I do like the little changes that they've made, it's just everything else is so goddamn similar. I mean, the ability for, um, to, the ability to run and jump around like this is kind of, 
liberating, considering how slow you usually move in Neptunia games. There's some medals, by the way. Considering how slow you usually move in these games, and the ability to, like, grasp, ca carry... <laughs> Let me try it again. The ability to grab on stuff and climb up it is also here as well. I might actually go and show that off. But it's just... Considering that they've been recycling dungeons from the Rebirth games again, it means that... Yeah, this is actually a new dungeon, I think, because there wouldn't... You wouldn't be able to actually do this in the, um... In the regular dungeons. Considering that they've just been re recycling regular dungeons, there's very little time that you actually get to use the, um... There's very little times that you actually get to use the different abilities for moving around and stuff, and it's kind of disappointing. Like, the very first dungeon they give you is a brand new one. It's the Grand Archive, and it it demonstrates to you, um, rain with me. It demonstrates all the new abilities to you, right? So you get to play around with all the new abilities and it, it, in a tutorial, and there's this one section where. If he gets down on her hands and knees and crawls through like a tunnel and something like that, you only get to do this once in the first few hours of the game and that's in that tutorial section and I don't know why. If they had made a bunch of new dungeons that reflected the idea of being able to move around so freely, I would have liked that change a bit more, but they didn't. Also, a little minor thing here. Once you've completed a mission, which we didn't do by the way, but once you do, you actually have to keep coming back here to the Grand Library in order to turn it in. Which is frustrating. You can also, um, retire missions, which is what I'm going to do here. Because I want to show off a boss fight. And the only boss fight I know how to get to, because I accidentally saved over the save game that has my battle with Sega Mega Drive on it, is the Dreamcast one. And as you can see, there's also something about the Dream Eater there, which they don't tell you about, or the Time Eater. So, the more of these quests that I abandon, the more, the stronger the final boss gets or something? I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, I'm going to go to the Dreamcast era and I'm going to skip through all the cutscenes because there's a boss fight with the Sega Dreamcast and we'll go and do that because why not, right? It's it's like right there. It's the it's like the second thing you do in this era. And I'll just skip through so that you don't have to see too many spoilers. But yeah, there's Sega Dreamcast and she's adorable. Absolutely adorable with the controller on her head. That's an amazing design. But yeah, as you can see, quest complete. And in order to actually, um... We have to go back and get the quest. We have to go back and turn it back in, then we have to go and get the quest, and then we have to come back. And even more annoying is... Well, you'll see in a second. So, if we go back to the Grand Library, we go back to the mission, we report the mission... You might notice that we don't have any more missions to do in this era. Exit out of the menu and go back in and suddenly we do. It's like, fuck me. That, that is honestly the most frustrating thing imaginable. But anyway. Yeah. Now we have to go back to the Dreamcast era when that, this whole easily could have been just like one long quest. Or even better, just let me turn in quests outside. I mean, I might be able to do it if I go to the mission info. But then again, I might not be able to. So, yeah. Because mission info only lets you see the... um. The missions themselves. It doesn't actually give you like the report and retire. So, yeah. I don't know if the... It says third warehouse. And just, it makes me think of that other dungeon that we see like three fucking times already. But, yeah, if we go into Virtual Forest, it's actually been destroyed, which is kind of neat. But anyway, if I come up here, there's a boss fight with Sega Dreamcast. So we can do a boss fight. More medals. Breakable objects actually, like, respawn as well, which is kind of neat. But at the same time, once you've hit them once and gone, like, a stack of, like, four or five items out of the whole thing, it, um, it, it doesn't really benefit you to go back and keep breaking shit. So, anyway, boss fight with Sega Dreamcast. I'm probably nowhere near the level I need to be for this, but there we go. Look at, look at those rolls of hair. You can eat those. <laughs> Yep, dramatic music started. And here comes the boss fight. And she gets to move first. 
Thankfully, I've got a bunch of health, but, you know. Okay, let's... Let's hit her shit. Also, the game's annoyingly got this little control problem where the game lags up so much, it has trouble telling when you're rapidly mashing the button and when you're holding it down. It's kind of annoying, honestly. But anyway, all those attacks, and considering I'm level 22, this isn't actually too far-fetched, but imagine running into this boss fight at, like, level 12 and not even seeing that little HP bar go down. Yeah, that kind of happened to me, but anyway... Let's hit her with a magic attack, just so you can see another one of these animations. <laughs> That's how it always goes with these things, isn't it? It's so epic, and then you just miss. Just try and dodge this. Yeah, I actually hit her that time. Not bad. What do we do? I'll show off Fever time, because I'll probably have it unlocked before the boss fight's over. It's pretty simple how it works. Thankfully, I've got all the HP I need to live through this. But yeah, even even with my people at like level 22, everybody feels a bit tanky. It's a little bit disappointing, honestly. The game's also got some weird XP balancing going on where you'll end up fighting like really strong monsters and they'll give you less XP than weaker monsters in a previous dungeon. It's really weird. It makes it... It makes it easier to grind on weaker dungeons than stronger dungeons, even if you can beat the stronger enemies. But anyway, we're about to hit 100 fever. And once you do, this little star appears. And if you successfully collect it, like I'm about to do, you go into fever time. And fever time is basically, while you've still got fever meter, you can attack as much as you want and the enemy can't do shit and you also get like enhanced stats. So, for the boss fights, the best strategy really is just gather around, beat the bejesus out of the bosses, and you win, basically. And I said I'd say how Lily Ranks work, and Lily Ranks are basically when you've got a party member that you're hooked up to via the formation system that, um, that, you're, that will take their turn next you will often get them coming in to give you a little bit of extra attack power. There might be things later on, but when I was looking through the menus, there was nothing that seemed to signify this. There isn't even a place where you can go to check what your Lily Ranks are, which is a little weird, other than actually, like, having them in formations. Well, I mean, if there is, I haven't seen it. Because there have been times where I haven't seen it, I fully admit. But, yeah, I have not seen it. Might be my fault, might be theirs. But yeah, as you can see, we did an absolute ton of damage that whole time, and now we all get another turn. So yeah, we basically win this shit. If Neb can stop missing, Jesus Christ, girl. God. Don't know what it is with Neb, but she can't hit shit. And Dreamcast is down. I won't lose a battle. Yay! I've earned a lot of the It just it feels like another lazy recycling of Neptunia. It's got Neptunia level writing, made me laugh a couple of times, I will admit. It's got Neptunia level voice acting, it's fine to listen to, but again, you've got the Japanese if you need it. As you can see, Sagami got the Dreamcast transform because we ran into her despite the fact that you know that she didn't decide that Dreamcast didn't decide to join us save and save and save thanks to security guard who's, who, who's, who was that meant to be a Resident Evil guy I don't know possibly it just yeah it just feels like another lazy recycle a bunch of stuff's been recycled the dungeons have been recycled the enemies have been recycled uh, just yeah they recycled a bunch of the dungeons despite the fact that 
it could have been done better if they remade a bunch of the dungeons to work with everything so except it just instead of just like lazy gimmicks on top it's it really is disappointing honestly especially since they've given the battle system a bit of a kick up the butt and they've added class changing despite the fact it doesn't do too much but it does do something and fever time's in there even though it doesn't really do that much it's just yeah I'll say, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you're a fan of Neptunia, you'll probably love this. If not, go buy Neptunia Rebirth 1. It's cheaper and it'll give you the introduction that you'll need to play this one. So, you know, that's pretty much all I got. Because, like, what else is there to say about something that so heavily recycles what the previous games did? It feels like Neptunia Rebirth V 3.5 or something like that. I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't ported V2 to the Vita yet. You'd think they would have ported V2 by now, but they didn't, so... Yeah. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.